I'm talking right now pretty solely about what you can do in a small apartment setting with this amp at home. I'm not talking about gigging. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about here in the room right now, what this actually does and, and, and how to get it to sound good if I just, if I just wanna jam in my house, but I don't wanna blast out the whole freaking neighborhood. to this week's episode of The Effects Loop. I'm your host, Jay Byrne. Today we're gonna revisit the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb Tone Master. Why? Because I've been searching around, just watching videos on YouTube about it, and I feel that there's a little bit of information that's just lacking, that just doesn't exist. That certain like tips and tricks, is what I'm gonna call it, to do with this Fender, Ma Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. Um, and these tips and tricks would probably work with any of the Tone Master line, actually. But for the Deluxe Reverb, I think they work a little bit better because we're talking about home volumes. Like people want to have, people want to be able to play this in their like apartment and stuff like that. And yes, it can get very, very loud. At the full 22 watts, it's as loud as a legit Fender Deluxe Reverb, which anybody who's had a Deluxe Reverb know that those amps are not quiet, okay? What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some tricks that I've learned to make the amp sound better because, okay, the attenuator on the back, okay, you, you can step it down. It goes from 22 watts all the way down to, I think it's uh, 0.2 watts is the lowest setting. That low setting is useful if you want to play late at night, if you're not trying to be too discerning on the tone of your guitar. Because I can tell you the truth, that low setting doesn't sound very good. It's sort of, it, it has, there's a fizziness to it, there's a, there's, a, there's a sound to it that just doesn't sound that great. And I think when you watch a lot of these like gear demos to, to talk about this amp, they talk about that setting like, oh yeah, you can bring it right down and you can crank it. Yeah, you can. But the amp does not sound anywhere near its best at that setting. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. I mean, I, I can show you right now because everybody else, every, every video you watch is gonna do this. Ah, okay. All right. And you can get, turn it all the way up, 10. It's a fun, it's a fun setting to play at, okay? But it doesn't really sound like a deluxe reverb cranked. It's, it sounds like, 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 kind of like a cheap Fender, I don't know, like a knockoff, like a cheap Fender digital thing. Like, it just doesn't have that sound to it. Now, I found that anything, when you're dealing with the attenuator in the back, anything above the lowest attenuation, like the next one up, okay? That richness in the sound starts to come back when you click it one step up from the lowest attenuation, which I think is like 0.5 watts. I, I can't see it from here because it's in the back. But But, now take a listen. You hear that? There's a 
big difference in the sound quality. It sounds a heck of a lot better at that slightly brought up setting, okay? And at that setting, you can set your amp on like five, all right? Which, in the room right now with me, if it's on a stand, it's loud. I took it off the stand and put it down on the floor because there's this thing that a Fender Deluxe Reverb does. It's called, um, it's, it's almost like a bass bump that you get, this thump you get with the bass from a Deluxe Reverb. That on a stand, you kind of lose the thump. But when it's on the floor, because it's coupled with the floor, that bass thump is there. And it's kind of like the reason why you like these amps. It's just it's something with the feeling of these amps. And with a legit tube one and with the Tone Master, that thump is there but you have to have the amp on the floor to feel that thump because you can't get the bass, you lose it because you're not coupled, the wood is not coupled with the floor, okay? Depending on where you are, if you were to take this amp into a room that had like a cement floor or something like that, you're probably gonna lose some of that thump. But on a wooden floor in an apartment, I'm talking right now pretty solely about what you can do in a small apartment setting with this amp at home. I'm not talking about gigging. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about here in the room right now, what this actually does and, and, and how to get it to sound good. If I just, if I just want to jam in my house, but I don't want to blast out the whole freaking neighborhood. So yeah, so if you've got that set like that, okay. It's still pretty loud. the tube streamer. Put it in the on the on the neck pickup. Sound that bad. I, got, I mean, I got the reverb up kind of high right now, anyway. But so you can get hearing that swell. It's on like four, three or four. Um, but personally, you can make it work at that volume, even in in, in, a, in a house setting. You can bring it down a little bit. Like the problem is, is below four, unless you've done the firmware update, which I got to be completely honest with you, I fought it because people look at like the reverb and everything, they think they, like it's a mistake because that's what we're used to with firmware updates. We're used to firmware updates fixing a problem. But the thing with this amp is the firmware update doesn't fix a problem. It gives you a mod, a basic mod that people do to a deluxe reverb. They clip the bright cap and maybe try to adjust the, va the variance on, the, uh, on the, the reverb in the tremolo and stuff. Out of the box with the stock firmware, which is the vi is what they call um, Fender's not uh, like trying to like make excuses for it. They call this the vintage correct firmware. So whatever deluxe reverb they used to model this amp after, that's what that amp sounded like. I, I can almost guarantee you if you were to line this up side by side with whatever they used, it probably sounds identical. I mean, yeah, there could be some minor differences because there is a presence to a tube amp that's a little bit lacking in the digital versions. But at volume, you can barely tell the difference. So what I've been doing lately, and I tried this the other day and I, I really liked it. I think four on the volume, which is pretty darn loud if you've got the attenuation up, is, is, the, is kind of the first place on the dial that you can get this amp to, it's not breaking up yet. You still got a clean sound, okay? But if you put it on four, you're still getting a little bit of breakup. But it's pretty, pretty clean. It's really clean. But there's a slight hint of breakup if you really, really listen. At that volume, you can apply, say, like a tube screamer to it or something like that. Now, a lot of people will do the tube screamer trick because they, they look at this and they say, oh, okay, this is supposed to be like a real deluxe reverb, okay? So a real deluxe reverb, you can crank the tube screamer, you can put your, your, uh, your level cranked all the way up, 
and you tone down and you get that very typical Tube Screamer thing. I will show you that actually. And I've got right now on my Tube Screamer, I've got the tone in the center, I've got the, um, I've got the drive in the center, and I've got my level cranked. Because that's what people do with the Tube Screamer. There's no digital clipping there, it's not bad. But you notice the drastic volume change. So if you bring that level down, if you're using like, say like a, a TS-9 or a Tube Screamer TS-808, match it. Get it so it's just a little bit louder than the amp itself. a lot better at that volume it, it just solid state digital type stuff sometimes it will work with the tricks for tube amps but there's a lot of headroom so if you turn this level up it gets louder and louder and louder so by just adjusting it like unity level with your amp I think you get a much better response from, say, a drive pedal that you want to use or an overdrive pedal that you want to use with the amp. Um, but lately, what I've been doing, this is what I noticed was actually kind of a cool idea, personally, was that if you take the attenuator in the back, you can crank it all the way up to 22, which is insanely loud, and I'm not even going to play it at that volume right now, but you click it down one, and that's at 12 watts. So you're at like Princeton reverb territory now, basically. With the volume all the way up, shut off that, because it's just giving more food. noise. With the volume all the way up, it's loud. But use your volume on your guitar. If you've got a decent volume on the guitar that you're playing, where it doesn't muddy up or mess up the sound, use that. because I'm not playing anything fancy today. I'm just playing stuff to illustrate what I'm talking about. I'm not really going out of my way to do like awesome guitar playing today. But uh, anyway, you can put this thing at volume. You can even, you could crank it up to five or six where you start to get breakup, okay? At volume, this is loud. Like, that's some serious volume but bring it down. Bring down like three or four on the volume of the guitar. And then that richness that you get in the sound of say a deluxe reverb when it's at a good volume, that richness comes back. And you can use drive pedals with it, but you're gonna have to adjust your drive pedals accordingly. Now, there's also a drive pedal trick that you can use as well. Use the volume on the drive pedal. If you want to keep the volume up, and that's loud, okay? On a guitar, obviously. And when you put this pedal on, it's gonna be very loud. Bring the level of the drive pedal down. You're dealing with a solid state digital amplifier, okay? So, you're gonna get the quirks of a solid state digital amplifier. However, they're trying to make it feel and play like a tube amp. And you get a little bit of those too. But I feel like it's a balance between the two. It's like you almost gotta be used to using solid state gear to get the most out of it because you're familiar with the little quirks that you get from solid state gear that you just gotta kinda work around. And if you think in that mindset when you're doing it, you have a lot better, you can get a lot better tone out of it. Like, I can put this, because right now, if I put this amp on five, 
it's really loud. But bring my volume down. right down on the Tube Screamer, right? Yeah, it's not the greatest sound in the world, but it helps. It's a way to manage the volume at home if you're trying to do it. Because I, I honestly do believe that these amps function better at the higher attenuation settings. They sound more realistic to what they're trying to be at the higher attenuation settings. And I know for some people that's loud. Like don't think that bringing this amp home, that this is your bedroom amp, and that, like, oh yeah, it's going to be fine, I can just use the attenuator. Yes, you can, but you are going to suffer sound quality degradation. It's not going to sound as good at those lower attenuation settings. If you're using a real attenuator with a tube amp, those lower attenuation settings don't sound that great either. They just don't work as well. So, yeah, I mean, lately what I've been doing is keeping it around 4 keeping the attenuator in the back at around 12 watts, which is the click down from the top. And just bringing my volume down. And you can get a really nice sound. Put my phaser on in here. You get a really nice... out of this amp and you're getting that fullness that you get with an amp at volume at like a, a a real volume these amps are made to be played like if the way the bright cap works in these amps I'm not gonna get technical what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain it to you in layman's terms all right we're not let's not let's forget about capacitors and all this other crap that's inside of a real tube amp okay Let's just talk about it from your ears, from being in the room listening to the amp. An amp like this, a deluxe reverb, which does not have a bright switch on it. The bright cap is there so that if you're playing the amp at lower volumes, you, you get a nice, bright, crispy sound. It, it, it helps the sound in the room if you're playing it. It's there for a purpose. Like it's there to keep your guitar nice and shiny at that lower volume. Now, when you hit four or five on the dial, the bright cap starts to come out of the mix. It's no longer there. So you get that full, rich, full body tone that you can get from these type of amplifiers with, you know, with that, with that, those type of settings. And I honestly think that a lot of people just think, oh, I'll clip the bright cap and everything will go okay. Or I'll, you know, put the mod in there and to get rid of the bright cap. These, I mean, what's great about these amps is the bright cap. Like a 65 Deluxe Reverb, which is what this is trying to model, has a heavy reverb channel, that swimmy, surfy reverb. And it's got a bright cap at around three, around three on the dial. It gives you that nice crispy sound. That nice bright sound. And a lot of people don't like the Jensen's that come in these, but I really like this speaker. You gotta give it time and you gotta let it break in. Everyone goes to drop a Celestion in there all the time because you can get the blonde version which comes with a Celestion cream back. And that's great if you wanna do rock. If you want a modern rock amplifier, that's awesome, okay? But if you want a legit 1965, if you want the Fender sound, surf rock, you know, classic like, like 60s rock and roll, Fender sound. This is that sound. You get that sound, okay? 
you can put this thing on three. Okay, I get it on 12 watts right now. No pedals on, actually. This is just the reverb and the amp. Notice how it's brighter. Now, if I kick this volume up, it is going to get louder. But you'll notice... in the sound. There's a richness to the tone that you get at those volumes that's not present in the lower volumes. But the lower volumes are there for people who want to play pretty. They want a nice bright sound. That's what the bright cap is for. And I honestly firmly believe that people are, are too hasty and they just want to get rid of that brake cap right away. Because all they want to do is hit it with drive pedals and they want to use it as a pedal platform amp, which it is. And it's good at being a pedal platform amp. But you work with the amp. All right? I'm going on and on here. But basically what I'm trying to get at is that there are ways to work with the volume on your guitar the volume on the amplifier and the attenuator in the back to work with it. I don't suggest using the lowest attenuation setting though, because the lowest attenuation setting majorly affects the tone of the amp. And I think a lot of people who are reviewing and watching videos on YouTube and trying to figure out, does this really sound like a real, uh, you know, Fender Deluxe or Fender Reverb, or whatever, they're using that low attenuation setting and they're not getting they're not getting the most out of this amp. This amp needs volume to sound good. It's not a quiet amp. There are ways to fix that, to help that, and there are ways to make it okay for home use. But this amp wants volume. So, yeah. Honestly, I think that's about all I can really tell you. Oh, there's one more thing I can give you. The normal channel, which nobody ever uses, okay? The normal channel does not have the bright cap. So, if you say you wanted to use the normal channel on the sample, you can put the normal channel, you know, I'm just gonna put the bass and the treble. The treble is gonna be around seven and the bass is gonna be around five because it is a darker channel. You can put this normal channel on like three. chime is gone from my signal but what am I on here I'm on uh... yeah. better on 12 watts right now you can get a little louder on this volume, actually, if you want to. Get it around four-ish. You can make that normal channel work. That normal channel works as if you don't have the bright cap. The only difference being that you don't have the reverb and the tremolo on that channel, but you could always add like a, a subtle, um, a subtle delay. slight delay to it and it kind of makes up for your reverb well you can add a reverb pedal like if you want to fine you know that's just that's another way to handle it but yeah i mean I, honestly i don't know what really else there is to say other than if you work with the amp you can get a lot out of it you can get a lot out of this amp if you work with it and i have a feeling i feel like 
people just automat people go from a tube amp to this and they think it's going to respond and it's going to act like a tube amp. Yes, to a certain degree it does, but you really need to have some knowledge of solid state and know how to work with solid state in order to get that sound. Plus volume is a key thing with this amp. This amp wants to be loud. It wants to have volume and at volume, you can get those tones at volume. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, I really wanted to get some of that information out there because I feel like that information is just not as easy to come by. And there's not a lot of people talk, but talking about the tips and tricks with these amps. They're just showing you what the amp sounds like. So yeah, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment underneath. Let me know what you think, what's your opinion on these things. I get plenty of negative opinions and plenty of positive opinions when it comes to this amp. Um, there are people out there who can't stand these things and just immediately hate them. But you got to work with them. If you work with these amps, they're really good amps for the money and you don't have to worry about the maintenance. And you do have those attenuation options if you want to use them. But don't expect them to sound as good as the amp at a decent volume because they're not going to. But yeah, so uh, this week is a guitar video. Next week will be another movie video. That's how I've been doing it with the SFX loop and the FX loop. So anyway, I'm Jay Byrne. This has been the FX loop. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.